On this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, Kent fixes his mixing board. We find out if electronics do in fact get thirsty. Amos just wants to simplify things. Ah, oh, that whole thing is classified. We got some Star Wars news. Obi-Wan, anyone? Also, we've got season two of a cool show coming up. I can't wait. Um, we've also got a guest, because uh, one core is not enough. Hello, uh, my name is Int80. I'm the rapper in Dual Core. I hack computers and make rap music about it. Sounds like a show start to me. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 174 for Thursday, the 17th of May, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, we don't matter, and 80 is in the house. What's up, man? Not much, just chilling with my Diamond Club. Here we go. That's what's up. Kent, uh, you're quiet, man. Like you, you actually nailed the intro for the first time ever, and uh, now you got <laughs> quiet. Like you, you, you've done. You're done. You're like, I'm, I'm out. That's it, man. No, I'm, I'm actually thrilled that people can hear me because I fixed my mixing board this week. Dude. <laughs> yes, yes. Tell us about that, because uh, a, a couple weeks ago you decided uh, your mixing board was a little thirsty, so you, uh, you gave it some beer. Actually, uh, real quick in the chat, they're saying no sound. Oh, well, that's uh, that's unfortunate. So let's click that right there. Now I've fixed my mixing board and uh... <laughs> maybe it needs more beer. <laughs> All right, Kent. So what'd you do to your mixing board, dude? Oh, man. So two weeks ago when we had Lienzo on uh, right at the post show, my mixing board decided it was thirsty, or at least that's what uh, my my clumsy hand decided. Uh, spilled a little bit of beer in the mixing board. And uh, newsflash for anyone anyone who has electronics out there, liquid is not a good thing to introduce. No, no. Yeah. So we had a we had a, a, a catastrophic audio fail on this end, and I thought I'd fixed it. And then last week I found out that the mixing board didn't work, and I had to do a last minute adjustment uh, just prior to showtime. And now we're back because I. I took the mixing board completely apart, cleaned it all out, and got it all put back together, apparently correctly, because my sound is coming through. Now, I do have a question for you, and Bob Kelly, thank you for the cheers. That's probably the biggest single cheer we've had. Um, I, I've got a question for both of you, actually, individually. Uh, Kent, do you okay. feel more of a kinship with your soundboard now that you've gone inside? <laughs> Don't you always feel closer once you've been inside? Okay. And 80, um, I, I, I know this is not a situation you are completely unfamiliar with. I'm sure during your some show somewhere, some really important gig, you decided, hey, I don't need this beer. My mixing board or my, my DJ equipment or this monitor or this microphone needs it more than I do. <laughs> Something to that effect. Uh, I was playing a show in Brooklyn last summer with uh, MC Frontalot, Michael Kill, and uh, Schaefer the Dark Lord. And behind me on the DJ controller was Fuzzy Knop. And uh, Frontalot was uh, up basically as a direct support we were headlining. And Frontalot spilled water all over the stage, and it shorted out Fuzzy Knop's DJ controller. So when I got on to play, we had uh, quite a fair amount of sound issues. And the uh, the tech in-house, uh, like the sound guy, was uh, not too helpful. And uh, Michael Kill got belligerently drunk, and we were finishing out the set with Hack All the Things, and I heard this, like, smashing sound happening. <laughs> and I looked over, and Michael is smashing the mic stand into the stage <laughs> to the cadence of Hack All the Things. And then uh, oh. he, uh, he peed in a trash can later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that that really just got out of hand. Yeah, that, that really <laughs> – I mean, it wouldn't have been a good story if you hadn't pissed in the trash can afterwards. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> don't, don't spill water on a – electronics yeah that's um i mean he, he decided to start hacking that's all it was just different than what what the song is about <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> um how was your week this week 80 mine or yeah. yours uh mine is fine normal uh rap life uh go to work hack computers during the day and um go uh go play a show this weekend i'm on my way to uh nolacon in new orleans super that's, excited that's not just that's just awesome I, man I, I don't ever, after I leave the Air Force, I don't ever want to travel for work unless it's like in style travel, like, you know, first class kind of tickets and stuff. I am tired of traveling in coach for work, but I'm more than happy to watch other people travel in coach for work. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what was your week, Amos? 
Um, so starting last week, actually right before uh, we recorded last week, this big message came down and required a, a couple of hoops to be thrown, be, be, uh, be jumped through. And I okay. did that. And I ran into one of those problems. You know how the military, it's like, hurry up and wait. Oh, yeah. That's, that, that's our motto, I think. Yeah, well, it, it may have changed just a little bit. Because okay. it was hurry through the process you've been told about to fall into the pit that no one told you about. Even though they knew about it, they just didn't tell you. So uh, it, it, the whole thing, of course, I can't talk about what it was, but this whole like 40-step process was given to me two steps at a time by people that knew the entire 40-step process. Uh, I see. So, you know, they'd go home for the day and I'd be stuck waiting for the next step. And then come in the next morning, they'd tell me what it was or they'd, they'd give me the website I needed to go to or, or I'd, get, I'd get the access I needed and I'd start hauling ass to, uh, you know, to where I think is the goal only to find out, oh, they didn't tell me about this wall I got to climb or this pit I got to climb myself. Yeah. It was – so it's more like hurry up and, and, and not wait. It's like hurry up and – Go backwards? I, I, it was just I, I think you. I, I think you discovered what government efficiency is. Mm. <laughs> oh, and you know the kicker. Okay, so I spent my entire like the last seven days of my life have been dedicated to getting job X done. Right. <clears throat> Yesterday afternoon, right before I went home, I got an email from a coworker who the email should have came to me, but it went to them instead. And um, the email basically, if you read it one way, all this running around didn't have to be done. If you read it another way, they're just bad at writing the original correspondence. So this is like, let's eat grandma. It, it was it was bad. It was, <laughs> it, it was, it was like, um, hey, uh, all packages uh, have to be mailed from by FedEx. Okay, we're mailing a letter. Does, does that count as a... As, uh, no, only packages coming from Pasadena need to go by FedEx. It, it was oh, kind wow. of one of those things. And so once I read that, and I was like, you know, I, I like to read things both ways and try to get both sides of the story. As soon as I read that that one sentence in this email, it's kind of a toss away sentence. I put the brakes on everything. I was like, wait, this this person in Georgia um, may have invalidated this entire process. So I came into okay. work this morning, and sure enough, the entire process is completely invalid because it doesn't apply to us. That's yeah. That that sounds standard. Yeah, that was that was that was my week. That was that was my entire week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, 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 did you get any chance to to watch any television or, or um, like catch up on some shows that you like? Um, I, well, so my MacBook battery is kind of crapping out. So I've been tasked by a certain Apple support individual to, if I can get it to fail within a certain period of time, the battery to you know, run the test and fail, then I can go ahead and get it replaced for a cheaper price than if I just try to get it replaced as it is right now. Long story short, that's what it comes down to. That, that was my Saturday, by the way. Um, okay. so I decided to go ahead and put something on. Well, there's no, I can't listen to a lot of things repeatedly especially in TV shows. So I figured I'd put something on that I hadn't seen or, or at least hadn't seen all of. So it could kind of play in the background while I'm working on photography and a few other things I'm doing. I end up watching Cosmos. Mm. Like, Oh, uh, you mean uh, Carl Sagan from 1980? No, no, the new one, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I watched that one a long time ago. When this one was announced, I watched that one. And um, I've, I've probably seen each of the episodes about three times of season one. And... It's amazing, and every time I watch it, I learn something else, or I get a different perspective, and it, and it just blows me away that there's all this knowledge, and it's just out there for free in an entertaining format. And maybe it's, maybe, maybe it is just my my line of of entertainment, but I freaking love it. And now I found out I was looking for a link to throw in our show notes, and I found out there's a season two coming out. Ooh, so long awaited because season one's been out for. A while now. Well, it wasn't even season one until season two was announced. So, well, yeah, yeah, like, they, <laughs> exactly. It was just a, a, a mini series, right? Is all it was. Yeah. Um, eighty. Have you seen Cosmos? Like either either one of them? Yeah, yeah. I watched uh, the one with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson when it first came out, and then I haven't gone back to it since then. I I don't watch a, a whole lot of TV. I'm finishing up The Wire right now, so that kind of uh. exemplifies uh, <laughs> how much TV I watch. And then uh, I had some friends over Saturday night, and I introduced them to one of my favorite shows, which is The Eric Andre Show. Hey, man, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I'm excited about watching, though. 
this weekend, Deadpool 2 is coming out. Mm. And uh, yeah, dude, like I can't wait. But you know what? I mean, we of, of course, Deadpool 2 is going to be it's just going to be great. If it's it's if it's anywhere near as good as the first one and I've heard that it's even better, mm-hmm. which is going to blow my mind. I am also excited for next weekend. It's going to bring Solo. Yeah. Like the next We've the next about two it. weeks are insane. Like I don't I, dude, I I when we talked about it a few times. Solo, mm. I was a bit apprehensive when I when I found out that it's, you know, um uh what, what's his name Aaron Reich I think is the the guy that's playing Han Solo I was a little bit concerned I was like ah he's kind of an unknown he doesn't really look that much like Harrison Ford he doesn't right. sound that much like him but the more material that they released the, all the trailers and some of the clips that I've seen like on Twitter and whatnot like I'm actually getting really stoked for this movie I think it's gonna be great AD are you excited about the the new Han Solo movie coming out yes I am excited I love all of Star Wars everything I've seen in Star Wars so I, I read some interesting things today. I heard that they're looking at making the Han Solo movie the first of a trilogy. They're talking about making a, a, a solo trilogy. Really? I had not heard that. Is that in the article you posted? Because I totally didn't read it. I just figured you'd tell me about it. Uh, actually, that <laughs> that is not what I posted because that led me to the discovery of another piece of Star Wars news. So you know how we've we've got uh, a Rogue One uh, to, from like two years ago, mm-hmm. and then now Solo is coming out, mm-hmm. and there's supposed to be a third like uh, you know separate Star Wars story, right? And there's been um, some speculation I'm, for I'm, some time. I'm gonna guess. Uh, um, what's your guess? Jar Jar. Uh, that's right. <laughs> it's uh, the Jar Jar Binks show. Uh, no, actually, they, it's just, it just they, it just has a, the opening crawl. And then John Williams in the background, dun, 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 and then the, the, the credits start rolling. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's uh, that's all that movie would need to be. Uh, no, so there has been no no official announcement yet from from Lucasfilm, but all the nerd websites are reporting that it's going to be Obi Wan Kenobi, mm. and uh, they're talking about a very strong possibility that Ewan McGregor will come back and reprise the role of Kenobi. He of course is the one that played him in the prequel trilogy. That was that was actually a really good choice to cast him in the first place. Like he's one of my he's one of the highlights of the 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 one, two, three trilogy. The prequel trilogy. Oh absolutely. Trilogy. Um, yeah. And then I saw a video not too long ago. It was basically a voice artist talking about how people, you know, how he does the voices or how actors do voices to other actors and things like that. And he spent a lot of time studying how um, uh, 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 Alec Guinness. Yes, Sir Alec Guinness. How he spoke and how he spoke in the movie to replicate that for the uh, the the trilogy. So yep. That is. Uh, what do you think, Eddie? Do you think uh, you and McGregor should come back and be Obi Wan Kenobi again? I'd be fine with it. Honestly, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a preference. I, I like. I enjoy the Star Wars universe so much that pretty much any content that they put out, I'll consume it and enjoy it. <laughs> I'm exactly the same way. Sounds, sounds like Kim uh, right there. Amos, so Solo is coming out in a couple weeks. Unfortunately, that's not our movie in the movie draft, but uh, let's check it. Let's check it out and see how we're doing in that. Okay, uh, that would mean I push this little button right here. Welcome to your BT Movie Draft Minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of May 14th, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice J. Ever watch a movie and think, oh, I know where this is going, then you get really excited about where it's going, only the movie goes into a different direction, and it sucks? Congratulations, you've just written an idea for a new book or movie. Says who? C. Robert Cargill, of course. Shit, bitch! Let's go to the scores! <laughs> Team The Bot Squad is in last place, still waiting for their first film. Team Walking Drunk is in fifth place with $30.2 million. Team Movie Party is in fourth place, thanks to Breaking In, bringing their total to $77.2 million. Team Game Night is in third place with $134.7 million. Team Ritual Misery is in second place, thanks to Life of the Party, bringing their total to $319.3 million. And on Woo. top for another week... Its team have a drink with six hundred twenty-five million dollars. <laughs> At your movie draft minute, all totals are accurate as of seven PM Central Tuesday, May fifteenth, two thousand eighteen. All right, thank you, Big Voice J and uh, Kent. I, I got beef with you right now, man. I got, uh, I got, I got beef with you. It because because I didn't pick Avengers. Uh, no, no. Uh, Ad, are you familiar with the movie draft? 
Uh, no, but I, th I think that we have a similar thing going at work. Is it essentially you kind of like uh, select your lineup of like how the films are going to gross and then um, yep. you basically uh, get points based on your correctness? Uh, kind of. We, we, we do it as an auction. So the movies pop up in a random order and you auction off uh, a limit of $100 total for all of your bids and you kind of see what, what, what lineup you have from there. Um, oh. Kent, uh, you... I believe you were on record last week as saying that Life of the Party wasn't going to make any money because <laughs> Super Troopers had a huge, a huge calling to it. It only made twenty something million dollars, and I said, "Nah, Life of the Party, man, it's like it's it's got some hype. It, it's got some funny women in it and shit like that. It might it might do good. Twenty two million dollars opening weekend for a comedy, not bad." Uh yeah, dude, I'm uh, I'll eat crow on that one. I'm pleasantly surprised to see that number come out. Um, I don't know if it's going to be enough, man. Uh, we've got a we've got a few more movies coming out, but dude, yeah. like Avengers has made over half a billion dollars domestically already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is insane. <laughs> Ad, did you see it? I did see the new Avengers. Yeah, see, I'm I'm uh, I I I would like so summer's coming up. The, uh, m most of the kids are going away for vacation. Um, I'm going to have some spare time to sit around with the littles and watch the movies. I would like to get caught up with the MCU before Infinity War hits video. So as soon as it hits video, I can watch it and I'll be caught up. That That's that's kind of like a soft goal I'm going for right now. <laughs> I did, I did the goal. exact same thing. I hadn't watched uh, some of the Marvel movies, so I had to watch like um, Black Panther. I had seen uh, Civil War, so that was good. But mm -hmm. uh, there were a few that I hadn't watched, so I'd, I had to catch up before I went to the movies. And actually seeing Infinity War for the first time uh, or seeing Infinity War is my first time going to a movie by myself. And we have uh, the Alamo Draft House here in Austin where I live, so you mm -hmm. can like buy your seat ahead of time and i picked the seat it was right before showtime i picked the seat with nobody next to me and wouldn't you know there was somebody ended up sitting next to me i took a shower before i went to the movies i don't think this individual did at least for oh days. man uh, that is the worst I, I am i'm no stranger of attending movies by myself uh, having gone to korea a couple times and you know different deployments stuff like that um I can tell you that it's always a crapshoot. Like you don't know, you don't know even even if you get there super early for a, for a non assigned seat kind of place, who you're going to be sitting next to, especially for a big movie. And man, sometimes it works out great, and you get free shots. Uh, like 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 <laughs> ju was it Justin gets free shots yeah. at Black Panther, or sometimes you end up with uh, uh, people that forgot to shower for the last three days sitting next to you. <laughs> Yeah, Four lesson weeks. learned, drop the $10 on the other seat and have some breathing room. <laughs> there you go. Um, hey, uh, Have a Drink is currently in the lead. They've only got one movie left, so they're kind of riding on, on uh, Avengers is, is really their, 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 their only stand because the other stuff isn't overly uh, excited. Um, well, I, I don't anticipate too much more. So they're kind of they're, they're kind of their eggs are out there. They're whatever they got, they got. But and we haven't done this in a while. So I'm going to try not to screw this up while, when I do it. Uh, we do have a have a drink um, a, a drink minute. Do we ever like do we have a title for this? I don't think we ever named the segment. It's yeah. uh, it's basically the the short clips that have a drink show sends us to kind of do a cross promotion thing, and uh, they're freaking awesome. And this week we've got Chris talking about. Hello, Ritual Misery. Christopher here from Have a Drink. So I had this whole little segment planned out for you guys I was going to do on loggers, and I was going to suggest that you go back and check out our loggers episode and grab a Founders uh, Solid Gold Premium Lager, which is very nice and very available. But on my way home, I stumbled across the Big Ass Money Stout from Evil Twin Brewing and Lervig out of Norway. This is a 17.2% abv beer jesus uh, th so coming in big imperial stout and supposedly they used uh frozen pizzas in the fermenters and then basically dry hopped it with money so let's go ahead and <laughs> dig into this bad boy because i wanted to share this with you guys cheers smells definitely like pizza Oh, God. Oh, they got the big ass right. Oh, that tastes awful. It's like coffee, pizza, curdled milk. Ugh. Oh, God. 
I guess I guess they can't all be winners. For something better, go check out our most recent episode. Uh, we've got one coming up on Bell's Brewery, which is going to be great. See you guys next time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That was great, man. <laughs> check those guys out. They are have a drink show on Twitch. They go live every weekend, every uh, Saturday. They're, yeah, they're they're pretty awesome. Um, uh, two quick things. One that is actually old because I forgot to check the folder, so I apologize to the have a drink folks for not uh, not playing that on an earlier show. And two, uh, is it is it is it public knowledge? I think it's public knowledge. I found out on the interwebs, didn't I? Oh, um, uh, Brittany and Chris's news. Yeah. Uh yeah, they're expecting. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Woo! So yeah, congratulations. congratulations. So so now Brittany's just gonna be uh, uh, producing the show, not partaking. <laughs> well, it depends. Last week they did an episode on coffee. Yeah. So yeah. some of them she can participate in. So there you go. Um. Uh, anyway, they're awesome. Go check them out. Have a drink show. And uh, uh, if you if you want to know about beer or what to drink or apparently what not to drink, uh, Chris will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they are pretty awesome. And if you guys think that we're awesome, head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck. Yep, there we go. Um, this show is going to continue going regardless, but you can make it better because Ken's eventually going to think his mixer needs beer again. <laughs> and mixers don't come free. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's likely. Uh, I do want to point out, uh, we do have a new patron this week. I want to give a shout out to Flavor Toothpaste. Thank you for your patronage. Yeah. Um, hey, another way that you can support this show is by going to cool shows like Dual Core and watching them. Uh, that is why we got uh, we got eighty on today because well, you keep showing up at cool places that we're at, so we figured it was about time to get you on our little corner of the internet. Um, I, uh, let's go through the basics real quick, because a lot of people, I, I, I don't necessarily know the, the origin story. So what's the origin story of not only uh, in 80 um, and, and dual core itself? Like, where, where, who, who, how did you hook up with uh, C64 and, and everything else? Like, let's go, let's go with this. Sure. So um, I live in Austin, Texas. I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, that's where Dual Core kind of started. The other half of the group is uh, C64. He's the producer. He makes all the beats. He does all the mixing. He does all the artwork. He runs the website. He's all the real talent in the group, I would say. And I just I just write the, and record the raps. Uh, but he lives in the UK. And so we met on, a, on an underground hip hop forum and I was just getting started rapping. I was like um, doing some freestyle battles. I was like uh, rocking shows at house parties. But uh, when I heard his beats on online, I was like, oh, my gosh, these are like probably my favorite beats that I've heard. And so my goal was to get good enough at rapping that I could do one song with him. And so uh, we eventually did a song together and then we kind of went from there. Wow. That's that, that's like a Tinder for rappers. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess so. Something like that. I, I definitely would swipe right or left, whichever one it is. I don't know. I, I never use Tinder. <laughs> whichever one is the good one. <laughs> So but, uh, I, I yeah. gotta I gotta ask you, eighty. Uh, yeah. So so you go by int eighty, which is like a that, that's uh, basically code for an interrupt command uh, in Linux. Is that right? Yeah, right. So um, in operating systems, you generally have a separation. Uh, you have like your user land stuff, and so that's where a lot of your programs will run. And then you have your kernel land stuff, which is where like drivers and uh, underlying operating systems internals, the, the code there will run. And so basically, when you need to bridge that gap, uh, you need to go like you know make a call from user land and have your code uh, hand off into kernel land. Um, there's different ways to do it, and so uh, in Linux, that's uh, that's how that that handoff is implemented, or it used to be actually uh, through uh, invoking interrupt 80, uh, 80 in hex actually, so 128 in decimal, which is not, doesn't roll <laughs> off the tongue as well. Uh, but then, uh, but now they do uh, syscenter, and it's actually faster and better. So we've actually, you know, when dual core came out, there were like quad core processors. We've been deprecated from the start. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i was gonna ask a follow-up question to that why did you choose that as your moniker yeah that was uh that was my hacker handle kind of um or, or one of them 
uh, I used to just like generate random handles and like dump stuff on paste bin. So, you know, just like burners. But uh, but that was the one that I kind of stuck with. And you would like when I would write shell code, which is kind of like your code and an exploit that, that runs once you've successfully exploited the memory corruption vulnerability, uh, you would end up calling int 80 to make your syscalls happen. And so I just kept writing int 80 a lot in my shell codes. And that's uh, I just took the handle. And actually, I'd, I hadn't met any other int 80s. I looked around online quite a bit, didn't find anybody. And uh, and then I was like playing a show in Montreal and some guy came up to me and he was like, oh, hey, like you're int 80. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I'm the other int 80. <laughs> and I was like, I was surprised to find out that somebody else had also picked that that moniker. I was, I was thinking, man, there's some there's some kid in Nebraska like he took my name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably not listening to Ritual Misery right now. Uh, so and then, and then in your your can, partner six sixty four. We are huge in Nebraska. We are huge. <laughs> huge. We've got three listeners in Nebraska. Yeah, oh, that's like half the population, <laughs> isn't it? Like uh, <laughs> probably, yeah. There's only like seven people there. Like, so it's and they're all, they're all on the east side of Wichita. That's in Kansas, right? Or in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. Which state are we talking about? It's flat. I don't know. What, go ahead with your question. <laughs> Oh no! I was just—I was just going to ask your your partner, the other half of dual core C sixty four. I'm assuming that's Commodore sixty four. Is that where? where yeah, he's got that? a lot better meanings on on his name. So um, it, it is Commodore sixty four. That was the first console that he owned as a kid, and then um, his first name is Chris. Uh, so C H R I S, and then his height is six foot four inches. So he's kind of like got all the double entendres stacked up in his name. The thing is, though. He lives in the UK, and I thought they used metric over there, so I don't know like how many hectares six feet four inches is. <laughs> Isn't it like hands or stones or something like that? Yeah, I, I don't know. No, no, no I, st stones is how much he would weigh. So if sixty four stone would actually be like, uh, like an elephant. Uh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I think it's like eighty four pounds per stone or something crazy. Uh, chat room might tell me that I'm completely wrong, which would be that's that's fine because I usually am. Um, yeah, it's standard. No, it's it's, yeah, it's they, they get paid in centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, um, so what uh what got you to actually like start rapping? What was your inspiration for rapping? Was it just this the the music you grew up with, or was it hey you know what I'm uh I like computers and I like Dr. Dre? Like what what was the wh how did that come around? A combination of the two. I grew up listening to hip hop. Uh, I think first song, uh, first rap song I ever heard was uh, Young MC Bust a Move. Um, I remember hearing NWA as a kid and thinking it was hilarious because they were swearing a lot, but uh, you know, not knowing any of the social context behind it. But um, I was, I used to uh, hack a bunch of stuff online when I was a kid and write all these like hacker tools. And so this one, one kid that I used to program with, he lived in New Jersey. So he and I would always talk hip hop. He actually sent me a cassette tape in the mail uh, of like a, a freestyle that he had recorded on Hot. 97 that was like these three rappers that I really liked. And so um, one day he sends me this email and he's got a rap written in the email about how he's a better hacker and programmer than I am. And so he's egging me on to write this response to him and basically refute his battle rap. And I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm not a rapper. I'm, I'm, I'm just somebody that listens to rap. And also like I'm a better hacker and programmer than you are. So I don't even need to justify your rhymes with a response. And uh, he just he bugged me enough that I finally uh, wrote some raps. And so the first raps that I ever wrote were about me being a better hacker and a better programmer than somebody else. Wow. That, that's that just that's uh, what do you call that, Kent? Uh, serendipity? Uh, Authentic. Yeah. In fact, I I read somewhere that there's a subgenre of nerdcore called geeksta rap that is yeah. pretty much that. I haven't heard that that in a long time, but uh, Whitey Cracker, another contemporary of mine, used to throw that phrase around. That's that's <laughs> that's nuts. Um, now you you've written a lot of songs. Uh, what, what is your writing process? Do you just get a get a beat from uh, C sixty four and kind of feel it and, and and start jotting down ideas, or do you just go straight to the microphone and just start yelling stuff like Jay Z and hope you remember it? Yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm not quite the uh, the freestyler that Jay Z is, nor do I have the studio time or the, any time to do that. But um, it's it's more so the former. So uh, C64 will send me a batch of beats. I'll go through them, pick out the ones that I like, uh, and I'll tr I'll try to be aware when we're putting a project together so that I'm not just picking a bunch of beats that all sound the same. Um, but then I'll listen to to each track and uh, that I've selected and whatever kind of emotion that it evokes. Um, I'll just kind of write to that. And so uh, on the tech side, I used to have a server that was coloed 
code in a data center and uh, I'd done some work for like a local ISP. So we would just SCP everything, which is like file transfer over SSH uh, up and down off of the off of the co-load server. Um, now we're in 2018. So we use Google Drive. And so all the beats go into Google Drive. And uh, and then I, you know, I write in Google Docs. And so it, it's great for collaborative editing. Uh, I did a um, an EP last year with a friend of mine, Michael Kill, the one that peed in the trash can. Uh, <laughs> the EP, the group was called the Troubleshooters, but we wrote everything online, you know, synchronously through Google Hangouts and writing in the same Google Doc. And so that kind of gave you could kind of see the cohesion when you listen through the through the EP and wow. uh, and C64 man his like his output is just insane like he's always sending me beats uh, he's got way more time to make music than I do apparently and he's actually put out uh, we put out six full length du- dual core albums over our span but he's also additionally just recently released two instrumental EPs and I've actually off of the first instrumental EP there are two tracks that I really like and have kind of started writing to and I kind of hope to spin those off into like full fledged dual core songs nice. Nice. Um, well, <clears throat> go ahead, Kent. Uh, no, 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 no. By all means, go ahead. Because I was gonna, I was gonna backtrack on something. But uh, go ahead. You're, you, you've got the flow, Amos. Well, but but now we're just we're talking about asking questions <laughs> instead of actually asking questions. So meta. You know, we could just so, spend the next uh, like ten or fifteen minutes talking about asking questions and how right, you should never right. do this. And in the you know, of the, the, the best part of it would be if is if he was actually trying to talk to us while we were talking about this and we were discussing and we just it kept instead talking of actually over him talking to him. It'd be amazing. It'd be the greatest content ever. I'll talk on. <gasps> oh. uh, no, so. <laughs> So C64 lives in England. You live in the United States. You guys were making music together before you'd actually met in person. How long was it before you guys met in person and what actually facilitated that? Yeah, it was uh, it was several years. Um, we didn't we'd done a number of tracks together, just kind of, uh, you know, enjoying the fact that both of us were productive uh, musicians or artists, I guess. And then uh, we put out our first album, Zero uh, One, in 2007. And uh, we got some some uh, some Internet publicity from that. We had a song I used to read uh, the webcomic Penny Arcade. So we had a song about Penny Arcade called uh, First One's Free. And so we put the album out and I sent an email to the guys who write Penny Arcade. And I said, hey, like we're dual core. We just put out a, a nerdcore hip hop album. And um, I've, I've loved Penny Arcade for years. And there's a song about about your strip on uh, on the album. So here's the song. And I sent them the MP3 for the song. I said, hope you like it. And then I went to work and I came back and I had like a million unread emails in my inbox and like the first I go all the way through and the first one is like uh, one of the guys from Penny Arcade and he's like this is amazing can we post about it and then the next one is the other guy from Penny Arcade purchasing the album and then the rest of them are all album sales because they had uh, posted about it and so uh, we started like being able to book shows off of that and basically use some of the money to bring C64 over to uh, hang out with me in Cincinnati and we actually did uh, Superpowers our second album just sitting down in my basement in Cincinnati over the course of a week <laughs> nice that is awesome it's like i'm here and here's some beats uh let's do this <laughs> yeah and I, uh we, we can't like get a Kian, podcast Kian, together over a weekend i can, I can, I'm, I can right? get an album together <laughs> Yeah, no, it was an awesome visit. I got to take him around to a couple uh, hip hop things in Cincinnati, and he got to meet some of my hacker friends as well. So it kind of helped make sense for him because th- I'm pretty sure he was a bit confused. Like this, this hacker kid is making you know nerd rap. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and I think also he, you know, there were some some sounds in my vocals, some reverb from the way that I recorded. And then once he saw my recording setup, he was like, "Oh, that's why that's there." Basically, I I had a, a basement and a condenser mic, and I would just record, and you would catch like the reverb of the echo from my voice going all the way down the basement, coming all the way back and then hitting the back of the mic. I mean, he was able to gate it out. It sounds fine on the mix, but uh, he was like, I can hear this in your vocals, and I always wondered why that was there, and then he knew why it was there. <laughs> nice. Oh, oh, now, so have you have you been over to England or anywhere in Europe? Oh, yeah, yeah, plenty. Um, we've played shows in, uh, in Belgium, in Germany, and then we've done a tour in the UK. We did a tour with MC Lars a couple years back. Um, I played... Last year at a conference in the UK in Sheffield called SteelCon, and so that was my first time playing there. But that was like a proper dual core show with with C64 behind me on the decks, which was awesome. And it was hilarious going through um, the customs checkpoint or immigration at, at uh, Heathrow. The the guys like looking at my passport, and I have a stamp in there that's like a different 
stamp for like uh, being it's like being able to do business in the UK, which I had to get when I went to go do the tour. Mm -hmm. And so he's like looking at it, he's like, oh, you've been here a few times. And I, I mean, I'd, I've been to the UK a couple of times outside of that. I went when C64 got married. I've been on vacation a couple of times. And then he's like, where are you going? And I was like, oh, I'm going, you know, I'm going to Manchester and I'm going to Sheffield. And he was like, I've been working here for years and nobody has ever come through here and said that they're going to Sheffield. <laughs> so <laughs> like, oh, we're going to get like secondary <laughs> Just like you let us through. <laughs> wow, that's a, so. Went, is is Nerdcore big in Europe? Um, you know, I feel like it's big everywhere because the internet's everywhere. And so we play about fifty shows a year, and we play internationally. I've I've played shows in Colombia, South America. I play a show in Brazil every year. That's like one of the craziest shows that I play. Like the audience there is so energetic. It's it's unbelievable. And so uh, every show that I've played in Europe has been a blast. So I I, I feel like Nerdcore is big everywhere. That's awesome. Right that's right. Um, well, let, let's ask this then. Uh, what's next for uh, for for dual core in, in eighty specifically? Like, wh yeah, where, uh, where are you going with it? Good question. Um, I'm basically on the big picture. I'm going to keep making music as as long as I keep having fun and as long as I'm not dead. Um, more smaller picture. That, that is kind of a hard I, stop. That's really yeah. <laughs> once you die, you, you, you remember the story I told you earlier? That's one I of mean, those. I mean, that's one of those walls you don't get past. Yeah, I mean, talk well, about no, an interrupt. You do like you do like Tupac, right? You record a bunch of vocals, and then you have sound engineers chop them up and make whole new songs for you. Mm. Uh, also, like Freddie Mercury, as I found out this yeah. week. And then you also get a uh, 3D hologram on Coachella, is what I learned. Right, right. It helps when you're high when uh, to see the <laughs> see that. That's yeah. And you can you can release. 12 new albums posthumously <laughs> yeah but uh but more locally i guess i'll say um i had shows recently in uh, baltimore san francisco and dubai it was my first time going to dubai but that was amazing and i look forward to going back there again and then um coming up i've got new orleans this weekend um back to california next weekend there's a conference called norcon that i'm playing at uh and then new york city the weekend after that with uh, Michael Kill, Lex the Lexicon artist, Shape of the Dark Lord. Um, and then I think I actually get to go to Ohio in June. Uh, I think I'll be in Atlanta in June. And then we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up in July and August. So the summers stay busy as expected. Uh, you'll always catch us at DEF CON. You'll always catch us at Derby CON, DEF CON being the largest annual hacker conference in the planet. Uh, so a couple of things here. One, uh, you got to get a, a picture of Michael Kill pissing in a trash can. Like that, that, that has to be on Twitter. It didn't have to show Wang or anything else, but it's like, get, get, get like a three quarter profile, you know, so you, you can just see him pissing into the trash can. That'd be amazing. Um, and, like the open shoulder look. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and the other thing is, how did you like Dubai? Like I, cause I was there and they had police cars made out of Lamborghinis and it blew me the hell away. Yeah, I saw like 100 Lamborghinis while I was there, and I just told them like my 50 were back at home. I have one in each state. <laughs> <laughs> that way I, uh, I, I blend it in. Yeah, that, that, that is if – you, if you ever want to go into the um, – what's the politically correct term? Arabian? Arab? What, like, what, I don't know. What, whatever it is, I'm not trying to offend anybody. Um, if you want to go into the, the Arabian Peninsula, go to Dubai. Just try it out. Just stop by there. Everything is insane there. It's yeah, ridiculous. There's there's so much money. Everything was like super clean. All the people that I met were incredibly nice. My mom is hilarious. She like she still doesn't know what to do with me, but she gets really worried for me. And so she's like, you know, oh my god, be careful in Dubai. And I'm like, all the terrorists put their money in Dubai. Like they're not gonna mess with Dubai. <laughs> and I'm like, worst case, you know, worst case, I get kidnapped by ISIS and take it over from the inside and run it into the ground. So you know, either way, it's fine. Uh, but. It was uh, it was amazing. I, I helped run a hacking competition while I was out there, and we had competitors like all over the map. These kids were like, some of them were you know black t-shirt and jeans, which is like your normal hacker apparel. Some of them were like totally covered with like you could just see the eyes. But man, they, those kids were amazing. They all coming up to me with great questions, uh, different challenges. They were like, we tried A, B, C, D, E, F, like all these different tactics that you know different approaches that I wouldn't even think to try. And so uh, it was it was an amazing time out there. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Biocal says Dubai is spelled with a silent dollar sign. And uh, yeah. I'm just going to say this probably where Ted DiBiase got his nickname from. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the dollar sign is silent in Dubai. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they had this, the mall that I went to, there's a huge, like it, it's a circular mall. It's right next to the, uh, the uh, uh, shit. What, is, what the hell is that called? The building called the Burj Khalifa. The, the Burj tallest Khalifa, building. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. At the bottom of that is this mall, and in the center of the mall is a gold store. And I don't mean you go in there and buy like a watch. Like they have toilets, they've got household furniture that's just laced or made of gold. And there's no security there. Like you can just walk in, browse around, and, and walk out. No security because you're going to leave your hand if you, <laughs> if you steal anything. Right. But it's yeah. amazing. Like I've never seen so much gold in my life. And, and it was literally like they had gold. Anything that you can think of around your house, they had it there made of gold or at least like laced with gold everywhere. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I was trying to be on my best behavior because I didn't want to end up in like Emirates prison. But I had two uh, two minor incidents, which fortunately nothing happened. But in the first one, we were at a bar uh, attached to a hotel and we were about to leave. And I noticed they had a laptop uh, hooked up to the projector that was projecting on the side of the building. Uh, and so I uh, popped a shell on the laptop and uh, put dual core up on the side of the building. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and then uh, uh, my, my flight back home was actually right after the show. So I would literally like show hotel and airport just like all in one shot. And while I was there, uh, one of my friends, uh, Juan Andres TS, he was just buying tons of shots and eventually bought the bottle. And we were just drinking from the bottle. And I was like heavily intoxicated, which is not okay to do in Dubai. And so I would like get to the airport and I'm like, okay, I just got to maintain everything's going to be fine. And I got to like go to this gate and I'm like the gate agents like asking me all these questions. And I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, I'm trying to make it go through so many security checkpoints. And then I get through the last two and there's an escalator and then there's one more security checkpoint and I can see my gate. So I'm like, all right, I, I got this. And, you know, by now it's like uh, three, three or four in the morning. So I get on the escalator and I go to put my uh, boarding pass in my passport and my suitcase goes sailing down the escalator right into the front of the security checkpoint. <laughs> and so they're all they're all staring at me, and I just have the most awkward <laughs> slow descent down the escalator <laughs> checkpoint. And I'm like, this is how it ends. This is how I lose my hands. But, but, <laughs> but did you piss in the trash can when she got down there? Because... No, I, you I might have missed the opportunity to really cap that off really good. <laughs> yeah, he, he might have lost something other than hands. <laughs> a trash can, at least. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I, I, I have to admit that I was a little truant while I was there. At the mall just outside the main entrance is a geocache, and me and several other uh, dumb Americans decided we wanted to get this geocache. It, <laughs> yeah. it happened to be blocked off for renovation at the time. There's all these signs, stuff like that. So I took my little Google Translate, pointed it at the sign, and they said, no enter is all it said. Yeah. <laughs> so we went around the backside and went in the, went, snuck in the gate from the back. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't say no enter back there. Yeah, no, it did not. Uh, uh, <laughs> and and uh, I got that geocache, by the way. <laughs> nice, dude. Oh, shit. Uh, so, Eddie, I, I think it's pretty impressive for a band to find themselves on a soundtrack of whether it's a, a Hollywood movie or a, a top tier video game. Dual Core is on the soundtrack for Watch Dogs 2. How the hell did that come about? That was uh, quite a surprising uh, turn of events. We were just doing our normal thing, uh, playing a bunch of shows at DEF CON, and unbeknownst to me, there was a gentleman from Ubisoft there who was being taken around by another hacker. Uh, basically, he was doing research and information gathering, and they were going to be starting the build out of Watch Dogs 2. And so uh, the the other guy taking uh, the guy from Ubisoft around was essentially guiding, you know, like, we got to go to this talk, you got to see this, and he's like, you got to go see Dual Core. And so they uh, they came to one of our shows and uh, the guy saw us do all the things and saw the crowd reaction. And so he was like, oh, my gosh, like I need that in the game. And so he reached out to me right after DEF CON and he was like, hey, like, don't tell anybody, but we're, we're going to make Watch Dogs 2 and I want your music. And so we uh, set up all the NDA stuff and it actually went really smooth. I totally tried to like juxtapose them out of some extras. Like I was like, <laughs> hey, uh, could we get, you know, one console of each platform and uh, get it like <laughs> autographed by the dev team? And like and they're just like, no, here's money, like shut up and go away, which is fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was really cool. And then um, another top tier game that I got to talk about is uh, Battle Sauce 2024. And so uh, there's a totally um, original music track with uh, me, Michael Kill, Sulphur, and Tribe One in that in that game. And the reason I bring up that game, in addition to the amazing soundtrack, is that they won uh, an incredible award at South by Southwest this year. So I feel like I'm in like two award winning video games, which is nice. pretty baller. That's I mean, for for, for, for a nerdcore rapper, that's 
I, I don't know what, what you would want beyond that, right? <laughs> yeah, not too bad. So what was funny was I knew about Watch Dogs 2, but it hadn't been announced that we were in Watch Dogs 2. And so I was um, I was playing a show a couple years ago with uh, Method Man and Red Man, which is also a cool lifetime achievement. And um, I'm, you know, I'm taking photos with Method Man and Red Man, and I, I see on Facebook somebody tagged me in a post, and it's this picture of Watch Dogs 2. It's a screenshot with the player up, and like there's our song like in the player. And so the person is like, oh my gosh, like dual core is in Watch Dogs 2. But Ubisoft hadn't announced it, and they hadn't told me I could announce it. So I just, like, totally ignored it. And I'm just like, hey, look over here. That's a man in red man. Yeah, like, we're just what, this thing instead. And then uh, the next day, Ubisoft, like, published, uh, you know, like, they were excited to announce that we were going to be part of Watch Dogs 2. And so then I could, I could talk about it after that. But uh, my producer, he saw the uh, screenshot, and he's like, how are we in this game with – all these other amazing musical acts like Run the Jewels and Aphex Twin and Danny Brown. And I was like, well, you know, clearly they locked us in at the beginning and then they leveraged that to <laughs> sign on all the other artists. And he's like, yeah, that must be the only way that it works. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to admit that there are a lot of bands that I would never have heard if it hadn't been like replayed endlessly on whatever video game I had been playing at the time. Yeah, definitely. There have been some amazing video game soundtracks out there. And uh, like Hudson Mohawk did original production. And I mean, I, I knew Hudson Mohawk from uh, from TNGHT or Tonight, uh, the duo that he did with Lunice that was really dope as well. Um, but uh, but yeah, like this just some incredible production that goes into uh, video games. Mm. And I. One other like uh, Watch Dogs 2 tidbit that I'll share is when they were doing the dev of the game, the guy from Ubisoft told me, he's like, I'm going to try to get your uh, music introduced in this kind of like party scene. And I'm like, OK, cool. He's like, I don't know if it's going to stick or not, but like that's the storyline that we're building into the game. And I was like, cool. And then I played the game and come to find out they're at Burning Man. <laughs> and it's like a whole like cinematic scene that they force you to like listen to our song. <laughs> I'm like, it's just, like amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. <clears throat> um that's fantastic hey uh th th is there anything else you want to ask kent before we uh, kind of move on a little bit no i just wanted to i wanted to point out that you guys have a new ish album downtime just came out last year um i haven't had a chance to listen to this particular album is there anything like what's a favorite track on that that you would point people to if they were just gonna buy one track off of it on on amazon or itunes or wherever you get your music what would you recommend my personal favorite song on the album is College Days. Um, if you are familiar at all in any way with um, with the story of Aaron Swartz, then you should definitely listen to the song for Aaron. And then um, if you are feeling like you want to party and you want some like heavy hitting bass, then you should listen to Shower Con, which is about uh, a thing that we started at DEF CON one year where we just like showed up to a party and got in the shower in our underwear. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to have to check out that entire album. That's that's really awesome. And it's available on iTunes, on Amazon, on Bandcamp, pretty much anywhere that that people get music these days, right? Yeah, thank you so much. It's um it's on all the platforms wherever you consume music, you know, Google Play, you can stream it on Spotify, you can get it on BitTorrent, I'm sure. Um and one of the things that's been really cool is we put put that album out at the end of 2017 and uh before that our previous release was like sometime in 2012. And so I I I thought that we'd probably lose a lot, large chunk of our fan base having that much of a drought in between releases, but um both downtime in the previous release all the things hit number one on Bandcamp charts which was really amazing so we we literally do have the best fans and best listeners in the world that's awesome man um so my throat is not not working for me today uh <laughs> drink more beer i i ran out i drank both my beers i i, I had to go all the way over there it's like 10 feet yeah, away have you drink all, have your sound drink all the booze to... yeah exactly um what uh? What I'm I, I always try to ask a question that, that you're not expecting me to ask, and that the audience isn't expecting me to ask, and I'm not expecting me to ask. So, <laughs> what is one hundred horse size ducks? Oh, really? That is yeah, that's rather impressive to find in your pocket, though. That's really uh, that's you must have a nice Those big large pockets. Large pockets, uh, pocket of holding right there. Um, <laughs> what's the most embarrassing thing to happen to you on a live show? Uh, 
probably probably the sound issues that we had last year that was like it was kind of tough to deal with like in the moment especially with the the sound tech not being helpful if i could um slightly de deflect that i have like a hilariously embarrassing story to tell about a different artist uh <laughs> so th this this other artist uh y'all might be familiar with um she's an incredible internet musician her name's ali spagnola but she told me about this uh, this show that she played in Dallas one year, and it was for um, it was for a Dave and Buster's opening, and so they did like huge radio coverage for it, uh, which had like it's like a top five like market, and so she you know they're expecting like a massive turnout, and so uh, she gets there and like nobody comes. And the only people that are there are just like the staff to like work the buffet. And she's just like playing this show to an empty room. And to make things worse, she's like five foot tall. I don't know if you've ever met Allie, but she's not not the tallest, but she's five foot tall. And instead of the room being like an open space, like you might you know expect for like a stage and a performance area, they had left all of the high top tables in, which are like taller than her. So like you can't even see her <laughs> playing her music. And I was like, that is like the most grimacing story I've ever heard in my life for a live performance. Ouch. Oh, my gosh. Dear God. Um, Mbeam in the chat wants to know, when are you going to write the RMP theme song? Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, how much Ethereum do you all have? Uh, uh, none. Oh uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. We'll get back to you. We'll I'll have to check the couch cushions. Uh. <laughs> um, hey, real quick, there, there's a few things I wanted to get 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 into here. Um, one, Kent, you've kind of gone away from Facebook because there just wasn't anything good on it, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Ad, are you on Facebook? Are you on the on the on the face space? Yes, I am. Uh, my personal profile is uh, Facebook slash dual core music. We're basically dual core music, everything online. But actually, uh, I used to work at Facebook on the threats team. And so my job there was to find malware that either spread across the platform or communicated across the platform. And so I basically just like killed botnets all day. Uh, yeah, because you're you certainly didn't have, have to do anything with privacy, right? Because <laughs> that's not the business you want to have on your resume right now. Uh, Actually, sur surprisingly, yeah, I didn't do any. I mean, w there was like a lot of heavy audit trail anytime you needed to look into the, at an account or anything like that. But um, it was kind of interesting when I um, interviewed there. One of the questions they asked me about like a, a, a technical approach to solving a problem. Um, I opted for a more conservative approach that would be respectful of privacy. And then they asked like why I did that. And I only explained the technical reasons. And they were like, no, like we like that answer. Also, like we like it because it's pretty respectful of the privacy of Facebook users. And I was like, oh, OK, I didn't want to say that because I thought y'all had like no respect for privacy of Facebook <laughs> <laughs> But turns out they so, were very concerned so, with the privacy so, of Facebook So your answer, your answer was on point. Your explanation sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'm still on the Facebook, and I find something uh, something curious and fun once in a while. And we, uh, the, you know, the Frog Pants community is, is melded pretty well in a Venn diagram of, di of a Diamond Club. And on Frog Pants Blue, which is a, a, a Facebook page that if you were into off-color stuff, uh, you should be part of that. There was a link to the Australian Mass Shooter uh, Alert page. Australian Mass Shooting Alert page. Now, Australia famously has gotten rid of all their guns. Not all of them, but like it, you can't like just the carry... Vast majority. Yeah, you, it's not America. You, you can't just have a gun like you have to have a reason to have it you know you're out there hunting jackalopes for family sustenance or some shit and um so the australian mass shooting alert page i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and bring this in on the on the screen here if you're not if you're not uh watching if you're just listening i'll explain it here in a second uh on 16 hours ago australian mass shooting alert page another mass shooting free day well done all yesterday didn't have one today uh two days ago not today folks it's this every single day. There's one saying, "Hey, we didn't have a mass shooting today." I join the page or I subscribe to what you know, whatever, whatever, right? <laughs> and Mike yeah. B is now uh, is ye yelling at me on the Facebook because he's a jerk. Um, the day after I sign up for this, they had a mass shooting. Yeah, it's like the, the first one in like 12 years or something like that. Yeah, it says alert had one in Osmington, 20 kilometers northeast of Margaret River. Um, I got to stop joining faces to face pages, man. Like I this the day after no, I joined the shit, it happens like how. Yeah, you need to find you need to find a bunch of like uh, uh, communities that you don't like. 
<laughs> yeah. Join them and just have bad things happen to them. Like, you know, Nazis are us or something like that. And Oh and my see, god, I just what bad thing happens to them. I I just learned about a Nazi thing today. Did you know 1488 is like a Nazi thing? 1488? Yeah. If you if you don't know, go look it up cuz uh I I've actually seen it in a few places, didn't know what the hell it was. I just found out it's like a total Nazi thing today and that is man, that's some sly shit. Like you we 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 need a we need a page that explains this this Nazi bullshit, these little hate groups on any side of whatever wherever you want to look, have it like blown out there. Like if you know of some, some hate speech bullshit, put that out there, let people know. So they know what they're looking at because that was complete shit. I was pretty pissed off when I saw that today. Maybe uh, you could um make a group that's like, we don't want Donald Trump to fall down the stairs. And then you could like join that group. <laughs> uh, 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 Kent and I cannot, uh, cannot comment on such matters in our current <laughs> occupations. Uh, however, we can speak offline. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, other th- the other thing I wanted to bring up is uh, Rick and Morty got renewed for 70 episodes. Yeah. Can't, 70 more seasons of Adventures, Morty. I, 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 I know you won't do the Hamilton thing as much as I've begged you to fucking listen to that album because it's amazing. You have to get over the burps and, and watch Rick and Morty. You just got to get through the first season, dude. It's it, The show is fucking hilarious, yep. and you owe it to the inner self, your your inner child. You owe it to them to uh, to see Simpsons done right. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> yeah, no, the subject matter. So the, the episodes that I've seen, and I've only seen episodes from season one, the episodes that I've seen, the content is, it seems really smart. It's really fun. Uh, it, it's, I like the style of the show, but like you pointed out in the first few episodes, the, the belching is just nonstop and it's so distracting for me yeah. that when I was laughing at a joke and then he goes back into the, the burping or whatever, like I completely forgot why I was laughing and I'm not laughing anymore. It was. Yeah, they it tone really it, they took tone me it down the as the show goes so, on. What what's that? They tone it down as the show goes on. But yeah, if you're, heard if that you're really times. like in a mood, an amazing drinking game to play is drink every time that Rick burps and start in an episode <laughs> one, and you will go through like six drinks. That's see, there you go, Ken. There, there, that gives yeah, you reason. That, that gives you reason to burn through the first half of the se- first season. Well, but can I can I go through them backwards then, so that like I'm drunk by the time it gets to the really bad burping parts? Well, I mean, after you watch the first one, you've, the introductions are out of the way, and they're kind of just in any, any order you want after that. So that I I, I approve of this message. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, I'll get back into it. I, I definitely want to be part of it because like all of my friends, everyone I hang out with, whether it's in person or online, everybody's like. Dude, Rick and Morty. Come on, dude. Yeah. So I, yeah, I got to get with it. And also, what's this? You haven't listened to the Hamilton soundtrack? Man, like, okay, from the rap side of things, David Diggs is, like, one of the greatest rappers that's out there. He's oh my God. incredible. It's amazing, you gotta dude. got to listen to it. It's so good. Yeah, it, well, and the thing is, it's not a conscious cho- – I'm not making a conscious choice to not listen to it. Mm-hmm. It's just – it's not – it's not in my sphere anywhere except for when I get shit from Amos here on the show. Oh, okay. Okay. So <laughs> let, let me put it in perspective. Uh, Kent, I'll, I'll put it in perspective for you. Hamilton for me to you is the same way MCU is from you to me. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a, that's a pretty strong endorsement then. Like that's, that's how I feel about it. Like I'm, I'm, I, every time I think about you not having listened to this album, like, it's like, what? And <laughs> How is like, this how possible? are you living in today's world without having heard it's, all of it? It's so good. We were listening to it. I got in the, in the truck this morning to take the kids to school before I went to my uh, physical therapy. And it was the last three songs of the, of the, of the soundtrack. It just started playing at that point. And like, I dropped the kids off and all of us had tears in our eyes. It is just completely impactful. It's so but amazing. It's so good. You still have tears in your eyes after hearing it. Like, what what are you on like listen through number 88 okay or- so th- that means that you need to go and watch the youtube videos that explain the musicality behind it and the theory of music behind it to say that it's actually specifically designed <laughs> from a very base level um uh, 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 a progression method to make you cry at the end of that at, at the end of the musical it's amazing it's so well done so well done okay that that's uh, that's okay. your hamel drop hamel drop for this week Hamel drop is that the name now? Uh, no, that's actually a thing. It's it's like a thing. <gasps> oh, hey, hey, Ken, um, okay. hey, somebody somebody dropped us a line. Why don't you go through that real quick? Uh, oh, you're talking about emails. 
<laughs> oh, like a line of dialogue? I, I, I know. We, of, we, we, uh... we don't get enough emails. Email us, people. Podcast at RitualMisery.com. Email us the random shit. We're going to read it. Like, just, just do it. <laughs> Yeah, no matter what it is. Uh, This week, we got an email from Hot Beverages, and she writes, Hi, Big Voice Jay is the best at movie draft updates. Fight me. Uh, Uh, I'm not going to fight you, M. First of all, I would be very afraid if you wanted to fight me, uh, because I'm pretty sure you're stronger than me. And also, I'm going to fight with you. I agree with you, so I'm not going to fight with you about that. Big Voice Jay is amazing. The dude's voice is just perfect and he is awesome at the movie draft so thank you m yeah. for sending that email to us uh like amos said podcast at ritual misery.com send us anything and we will read it on the show uh <laughs> should we should we should we promise to read emails in in our impression of big voice jay's voice oh yes definitely. um i don't i don't know if we should promise that i would say like we could put that like on a yeah, what, what do you call this thing? Like when you when you put things on a wheel and you like spin it, kind of like Wheel of Fortune. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like we should make one of those and and do like read it in the voice of Big Voice J would be one of those spots. Oh, then the, but then we got to fill up the rest of the spots. Okay, emails podcast at ritualmisery dot com <laughs> as to what the spots need to be filled with. We need at least twenty of them to make it good. Yeah. So podcast at ritualmisery dot com. <laughs> hey, I already said that. Hey, um. 80, uh, where can people find you if they want more More 80? We are Dual Core Music, everything online. So our uh, infrequently updated website, dualcoremusic.com, at Dual Core Music on Twitter, Facebook slash Dual Core Music, YouTube slash Dual Core Music. We're on whatever platform you get your music from, so feel free to stream us or or pick up our stuff wherever. And, uh, yeah, IPv4, IPv6, you know, we get around. And of course, we are, I, I can't let you get off the air without saying how much uh, from Diamond Club we appreciate you showing up to Diamond Con. I mean, uh, so, South by Southwest <laughs> every year. Well, I, I don't want to say every year, but like all the years that I remember, which means the I last drinking few years. Up. Yeah, sure. Uh, it, it's it's really everybody looks forward to you showing up. And I don't know if anybody tells you where you're at the shows, but man, it's awesome, and we really appreciate it. From Diamond Club to you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, actually, this year was kind of a, a nice surprise because I had forgotten to reach out to uh, Justin R. Young about it. And so um, I basically got a got an email at like or I woke up to an email at noon after having been out all night and gone to bed at like 8 a.m. Woke up to an email at noon. It was like, yeah, like we'll see you at 2 p.m. <laughs> and I was like, guess I'm wrapping in two hours. <laughs> so, uh, so I posted like a, a big, tall, like vodka soda online and uh, drank that and drank another one and hopped in a lift down to uh, Kung Fu Saloon. And then I rocked out with y'all. Yeah, that, that's that actually sounds about right. That's that's about the planning that goes into these things. Um, hey, Kent, what about you, man? Before I go down my list, I, I do want to point out that Dual Core is also on MySpace, folks. Oh, oh the, no shit. <laughs> hey, they're on yeah. all the platforms. 80 was they're, not kidding when he said they're on all the platforms. They're, they're literally a face space. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes, the actual face space. Oh, my gosh. Uh, no, guys, check me out on Twitter. I am RM underscore Del Noche. Pretty much everywhere else online, I'm either Del Noche or Del Noche 77. What about you, Amos? At Ethan Kane, it doesn't make sense, and that's why I love it. E T H A N C A I N E. Follow me on Twitter. Find out all the random shit I post to other people cooler than I did posted first. Um, that's not a really a resounding endorsement. Uh, you can keep up with the show at Ritual Misery on the Twitter, and of course we can be found live. Uh, pretty much every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific time, right on uh, diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Uh, we try to go live on time. Sometimes we're a little early. Some Most times we're a little late. And that's how that goes. Um, and, uh, of course, we want to uh, we want to give Kevin McLeod his due for, um, for the music that we play on the show. Uh, he's awesome. Go check him out in comptech.com. And uh, thank you for listening and or watching for Kent, for 80, and for me. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. We were way early, dude. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>